Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Baxter Student Ambassador Program webinar. Presenting for us this time is Zachary Harrison, one of our BSEP finalists from Red River College. Now, before we get started, I'd like to let all the attendees know that if you have any questions during this presentation, feel free to type them into the Q&A box or the chat box, which are both found in your Zoom toolbar, and those questions will be answered after the presentation has finished. Hi, Zach. How are you today? Oh, Zach, sorry, you might still be muted. Let me just make sure you're unmuted here. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, hello, everyone. Great. So, Zach, since you're already sharing your screen with us, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks, everyone, for taking the time out of your day to, uh, yeah, join me on this presentation. I'm really happy to be here and excited to kind of tell you about some of my research. So, uh, I guess my topic was Jamaica. So, going right into it, uh, Jamaica is known for its beauty, relaxed lifestyle, vibrant culture, and friendly people. And more importantly, this country is filled with authentic local experiences that truly welcome guests and embrace the culture. So that's kind of my theme to, for today is going to be more of the authentic local experiences that people can see in Jamaica. But as well on top of that, Jamaica is known for its reggae music culture, uh, Blue Mountain Coffee, its beautiful beaches, spectacular waterfalls, and friendly people who want to build real true connections. So it's almost the perfect destination for someone looking for a more authentic approach. So I did a little bit of research on some of the top statistics that I thought would be applicable to kind of what I'll be talking about today. So the top two markets right now is the United States and Canada, with majority of it taking up uh, United States being 68.6% and the Canadian market being 14.8%. And then as of 2018, there was about 4,300,000 people in total that traveled to Jamaica. So that's an increase of about 300,000 people from 2017. So it's significant that it's a destination people are really wanting to go to. And then as well, it was $3.3 billion in total visitor expenditure in 2018, which 91% being foreign travelers coming in. So those are some pretty significant numbers overall. Um, yeah, so this is kind of my customer profiles of the demographics that are typically coming to Jamaica. So the top two markets, as you can see, are the Generation X, which is the 35 to 49 year olds. And then as well, the baby boomers, which is the 50 to 63 year olds. And I'll be focusing more on the baby boomer population and how travel agents can somewhat sell to this market because it's a really key market. So looking at that, um, the AARP, which is kind of like a non-for-profit that has the interest of, uh, that, I guess, the baby boomer generation. They do a lot of research and studies on them. They have said that the top three trends right now are that people that are baby boomers tend to want to stay in motels or hotels. So that being 62% when they do international travel and then compared to resorts, that's 20%. So that's kind of why I want to focus more on the local authentic um, tours and boutique hotels and eco tours that are kind of happening throughout. So as well, this uh, demographic focuses or they spend about six uh, and a half thousand dollars a year sort of per trip um, when they do travel. And they also average about five to six trips a year. So it's quite a significant market to focus on. So this is why I want travel agents to kind of veer this uh, path for these people. Uh, and then the more importantly, another big trend is they're connecting with locals for authentic experiences, especially over meals and on tours. So they really wanna get down and gritty and get to really know the culture and the people and the history of where they're going. So today I'll be kind of talking about some sustainable travel points that kind of tie in throughout everything. So my talking points will be experiential travel, so kind of talking about what the definition of that is and how it's kind of the new trend and not even so much trend, just the new way people are wanting to travel nowadays. Um, I'm gonna now tie into the four pillars of sustainability and the importance of understanding these when traveling. Because I know people somewhat think that it's mostly about the environment, but it's much more than that if we're gonna be doing sustainable travel. Um, as well, just some of the desires for authentic experiences, especially for the baby boomer market. And I can show some experiences that we actually, uh, that are available in Jamaica for this group of people. Uh, and as well, some really cool boutique eco hotels that are kind of running the way in how ecotourism works, not only for just environment, or environmentally, but more community orientated, culturally, uh, historically, and I'll kind of go on to those later. And then as well, the abundance of local events happening in Jamaica on a day-to-day -day or a month-to-month -month basis. So there's always something happening. So that's really really awesome to see. So to start off, uh, experiential travel is also known as immersion travel. It's a form of tourism in which people focus on experiencing a country, city, or particular place by actively and meaningfully engaging with its history, people, culture, food, and environment. It can often be transformative. So 
basically people want to come back home feeling changed nowadays. It's not so much about the bucket list travel where they check something off, especially the baby boomer market. They want to go and connect with the people and the food and the land and really feel like they change when they come back and leaving a part of themselves behind, but also bringing back valuable lessons and connections back home. So going on to the pillars of sustainability. So uh, what I was taught is there's four pillars of sustainability. I know there's also three because social and cultural can kind of be merged into one. But I guess when you're thinking about the social aspect of the pillar, uh, we need to think about all stakeholders when we are traveling. So when agents are selling to their consumers, they need to be thinking about if this is like what they're wanting, if the baby boomer market's wanting to do a more sustainable sense of travel, which is a big trend right now as well. They need to think about the communities, the schools, the government, the tourists, and almost every stakeholder in that. And as well as being a good neighbor to one another when they are traveling. So being kind to each other, especially. And then this kind of ties well into the economic factor because when people are uh, going local and they're going to these communities and they're doing local tours, they're gonna be, um, sorry, they're gonna be kind of getting off the beaten path and they're gonna tie into these communities. So when there's say a new tour that's happening in a smaller town or village, uh, these are being supported economically and then the multiplier effects happen. So the multiplier effect, here's an example I'll give you, is when a tourist say is implemented in community, it can basically bring more people into that area, which will stimulate the markets, the restaurants and other services, kind of making sure everyone's succeeding off of this. So it's not just so much, uh, I know resorts are very popular in Jamaica and I know they're doing many sustainable efforts as well, but I'm trying to focus more on the small local aspects of this because that's kind of the true sustainability in my, or my beliefs. And then as well, there's the cultural side of things. So I guess tying this all together, uh, when you're bringing people in, they're learning about a new culture. So they're preserving the culture and heritage through historic tours, through local workshops and educating international guests. So it's building an appreciation for these people coming in and also once again, making that connection amongst the locals and the tourists coming in. So this is something I really want tour or travel agents to think about when they're kind of ta like talking to the, their consumers and briefing them on where to go and kind of like understanding what they want. So currently there's a big need for authentic experiences. So uh, I wanna encourage people to kind of get, off, get out of the resorts. So you can still go to the resorts and experience what's going on there, but also leave the resorts and kind of get off the beaten path. Make the real connections with local people, encourage them to try new foods and local events and, ha and festivities happening as well. So it kind of creates that, once again, that transformative experience for everyone, as I mentioned before. So here's some examples that some agents can kind of look at selling towards the baby boomer market. So for an example, the adventure side, uh, there's the rafting the Martha Bray. So basically it's this astounding river, the Martha Bray, and you can go with a local community or local guide and he'll get you on a raft and you basically go on these 30 foot bamboo rafts down this amazing river and you can paddle your way through. Or for some people that aren't as uh, adventurous, they can get a guide to actually paddle for them and they can sit down and kind of just enjoy the views. So it kind of works for, all personalities of that market. And then once again, there's the art and culture scene too. So there's this uh, council in Charlestown Maroon and they actually host local drum lessons and traditional herbs and tea uh, workshops. And this is kind of important because it ties that cultural aspect in once again of sustainability. So people are kind of preserving that culture and learning more about it. And then as well, uh, there's the food scene, which is, is one of the trends that baby boomers are kind of going into is they really want to discover what kind of foods are out there, but also connect with locals. So this is uh, another example. It's the jerk chicken that you can make with a local family and it's beside a beautiful river. So you basically go in and they teach you how to make authentic jerk chicken. You get to make the connections with the family, but as well, you're learning more about the culture and the society too. So here's some examples of as well, eco-friendly accommodations. And the one on the left that you see pictured is called Camp Cabarita. And it's kind of more of a rustic in the wood or in the forest um, hotel. And it offers more of like a blend of sustainability and luxury. But the part I found that was really unique about it is it sources all of its food from uh, on-site gardens. So that's really cool. And people really want to see that nowadays. And then as well, uh, the hotel or the hotel itself offers eco tours. So they have about five or six eco tours right now. And some examples would be waterfall tours, cave tours, secluded, secluded springs, and they're all run by locals. So once again, it's supporting that local economy. And that's located in Dolphin Head Mountains at Westmore. And then another one I found that was really, really cool was the Hotel Mockingbird Inn. 
And it ranges from about a $300 range. So it's a little bit pricier than the Camp Cabarita, which is about $135. So it's kind of like getting all ranges for all clientele. And it's located, located in Port Antonio. And it focuses on like basically all local furnishing or all, sorry, all furnishing is made by locals. So they have all amenities and local uh, furniture that's actually upcycled through bottles that they find and as well recycled. And then as well, they have about 16 solar panels on site that have uh, use about 25% of the energy uh, for that building to work. And as well, they have many initiatives in place. So they have programming that supports local schools and communities, and they actually have all staff doing volunteer work on a regular basis. So I found that really inspiring and they're kind of leading the way in sustainable travel for ecotourism. So here's another one I would kind of want to highlight as well. So this is called the Rock House Hotel. And this one's doing a spectacular job. And they're basically currently at 90% elimination of single use plastics. But by next year in April, they're hoping to be 100% elimination of single use plastics. They produce all of their food from a garden. They'd have a, a really high end composting um, program. And as well, they have solar panels to help energize the place as well. And as well, you can see it's a luxury resort too. So you're kind of not sacrificing that luxury for the eco part as well. So as well, here's some examples of local festivals and events that are happening throughout. So reggae month, this is just February actually, but reggae month is celebrating the history and lives of famous musicians, including Dennis Brown and Bob Marley's birthday. And this is just a handful of events happening throughout the year. So as well, there's a Jamaican rum festival, which I thought would be perfect for that group of the baby boomers once again. So it's an all encompassing celebration of rum from trade activations and trade education to two full days of consumer workshops, sampling and food pairings uh, and entertainment. So once again, this kind of ties in all of my theme of having um, the local festivals and having people there and support them through the multiplier effect. So when people come in to these communities, they're spending their money. And especially we've, as I said above, that the uh, baby boomer market is spending about six and a half thousand dollars per trip. So that's a lot of money they have to offer to these communities. Once again, promoting sustainability, but as well, it's kind of helps out the environment as well. So yeah, um, basically I want people, I want travel agents to sell it through discovering Jamaica with an open heart and open mind because Jamaica is known as the heartbeat of the world. And uh, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. So thank you so much for coming in today and listening. So if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you so much, Zach. Yeah. Great. And um, oh, and feel free to just leave it on either your thank you slide oh, sure. or yeah. the uh, source of slide. Yeah, we'll keep your screen up. Perfect. Uh, while we answer questions. So if anything gets submitted to the Q&A box, I will read it out to you. And if anyone here in the room with me has a question, I'll just put them on the line. Perfect. Hi, Zach. My name is Ian Stalker, and I work with Dan. Um, which of the uh, destinations in Jamaica that, uh, that you looked at that you personally found most appealing? Or um, most I found the grill quite interesting because it's a little bit more off the beaten path, once again, and as well Montego Bay. So I know Ocho Rios has more of the resorts and more of the touristy sections. There's a lot of more local tourism happening in those areas. Great. Thanks. Okay. Hi, um, this is Emily uh, from Baxter. Hi. Um, hi, I just had a question. Um, I was wondering which, if you knew which tour operators or a couple tour operators that and airlines that offer Jamaica um, from Canada. Okay. So if, uh, if you were selling Jamaica to someone, um, who would you recommend tell someone to go to to book their their package? Okay. Um, quite frankly, I would say through. I know Air Transit does the travel through the that area. But as yeah. well, um, uh, I'd probably say book, book with a local tour or I guess travel agent if you can, because I know that's kind of a industry that people aren't really going to. People are typically trying to book online. So I'd say just try and stay within your area and find a local travel agent that can help you find where to go. Great. Thanks so much. Awesome. 
And Zachary, what was the um, what was the biggest challenge you faced when preparing for this webinar presentation? Um, to be honest, because my theme was to find local experiences and kind of have that on authenticity, it was really digging deep to find things that were unique and not so much kind of more off the beaten path. So I spent a lot of time kind of looking for those experiences and those kind of hotels. Great. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I do believe that's it for the questions, but I'd like to thank everyone that tuned into the webinar today. Thank you all for taking time out of your day. And Zach, thank you so much for presenting for us. Yeah, thanks so much. It was awesome to be here. Thank you for your great presentation, and thanks on behalf of Baxter Media for participating in the 2020 BSAP program. We'll be in touch. Bye now. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.